Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. Happy Wednesday. Hope all is well with you. Uh, if you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight to relax and craft and chit chat with you guys. So tonight we are continuing the Travel Art Folio Project by Mod Kid. Look at this cute little, uh, cute little art tote. Uh, that we're that we're working on. So this is day three. You can check out the previous videos here on Facebook or they're also at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. And we are going to just keep cruising along here. So we started we started the flap uh, last night. Here's here's a uh, my little guy going on here. Look how cute it is. And then we made the the handles as well last night. So tonight we're gonna finish the outer flap. And we are going to start assembling the uh, uh, main area here. I'm excited. It's coming along quickly. After getting the cutting, for me, again, the cutting stage is always a little scary. But, man, uh, it went quick yesterday. And this is just seeming like a faster and faster project uh, the more we work on it. So it looks... Looks like there's a lot going on, and for me, I haven't done a lot of this stuff before, so it looked a little intimidating, but as we get going, it's just it's just been super nice, and the instructions are super clear, too. So, uh, the Travel Art Folio by Patty Young of Mod Kid. Uh, there is a PDF version of the pattern available still on her website, and the link is listed below here if you want to join in on this. And these videos will be online forever if you want to just follow along. Uh, I'm doing everything from the beginning to end. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. I I saw a few of yours in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group so far. So uh, if you want to share, if you're working on this and you wanted to share your progress, uh, you can check out the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on uh, on Facebook and then click join and I'll let you in. All right, let's get going. All right, flipping you around. You're all cut up, Joe. Nice. So, all right, here's where we left off as far as, as instructions. So yesterday we sewed the uh, scratchy side of the Velcro onto, the f onto one of the flap pieces, and the other flap piece we fused that uh, fusible fleece, which I'm kind of starting to fall in love with. It just makes something feel substantial, like immediately. It's, it's kind of fun. So what we need to do next is we're going to sew these together. So we're going to put right sides together, right? The right side is the side with the printing on. So when you hear someone refer to right side and wrong side, the right side just means the part with the pattern and the wrong side means the back of the fabric. So first we need to add our little curves onto here because we, we have like these, these cute curved handles. So uh, she says to take, something curvy and just mark it. Oh, so there's the option to embellish this too. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, I don't think I'm going to embellish mine. I kind of like the, the, just uh, the grasshoppers as is, but we'll see. So I'm going to actually take it off of this one just so it's on a flat surface. This is kind of squishy. Use a lot of fusible fleece and totes and purse purses. Yeah, this is my first time using fusible fleece, and I actually have some sitting around here. I might have to break it out and do more with it after this project, which I'm excited about. So, all right, I'm going to use just, uh, this was my top stitching thread. Uh, I'm just going to use the base of this. So I do want, like, the curve to be kind of a bigger curve, but remember, we're using a half-inch seam allowance and uh, so whatever curve I make, my actual curve will be like another half inch in. So I think this small little curve here will be enough. So I'm, I'm using a water erasable uh, fabric marking pen. You can just use a pencil if you want to. So I'm marking the side with the, with the Velcro. Okay. So now we can put right sides together. And if we want to, uh, you can pin this if you like. I happen to have a few wonder clips are sitting around here, so maybe I'll I'll just throw throw a wonder clip or two on. I like my wonder clips in lieu of 
in lieu of uh, pinning. Pinning kind of pushes your fabric around. This just grabs it nicely. Oh, I don't know the the type of fusible fleece. Let's see what she has in her pattern. Uh, oh, she just says fuse. She's just calling it fusible fleece. So uh, one side. Oh, here we go. Uh, craft fuse. That's what she's using. So right here, craft fuse. It's Pelon eight oh eight. Uh, the 20 inch wide. Oh no, no, that's the medium weight fusible. So that's the medium weight. So we're actually using medium weight uh, fusible interface. So she just has it fusible fleece at 44 inches. So, uh, but there, it was fleecy, the soft on one side, and then, then uh, that sticky pellet stuff on the other side. So I don't think there's really anything special to it. If you just go, uh, go to the shop and if the one side has the glue bits on and the one other side is the squishy and soft, then you'll be good. Okay, so we are using a half inch seam allowance. So that's really important, if you're, especially if you're a quilter, because if you're a quilter, you're usually using a quarter inch seam allowance. All seam allowances are half of an inch. So I want to just quickly measure that. Uh, so I have a ruler here. I'm going to just uh, lift up my needle here. And I'm going to put, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to lower my presser foot at that half inch. I'm going to just kind of lower my needle until it's on that half inch. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so it looks like my half inch mark is, I have a line there already. It looks like it is just, it is just, I can show you on this side. The half inch mark is just a hair, uh, it's just like right on this line here. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. All right, and I've changed my thread. I no longer have my top stitching thread in. I switched it to, my 50 weight thread. All right, so here we go. Oh, we're not quite the same size here. Maybe I can pin a little better. I probably just cut my pieces a little differently. We'll be fine. All right, so half inch. I'm gonna have to keep reminding myself that throughout this whole process. All right, so I think I'm gonna back tack uh, getting started here because we're going to be turning this piece right side out afterwards, and that's going to put, uh, I think, quite a bit of um, pull on these edges. So just to counteract that, I'm going to just back tack it. I know, Joe, I'm with you. That that uh, that half inch, I would have totally... That's just uh, one of those things that if I hadn't read the instructions really carefully and had that pop out at me, I, I would have just been doing this whole thing at a half inch as well. And I'm sure if you do it at a half inch, it's probably not the end of the world, but something, I mean, it might not end up being exactly perfect. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to, I'm using that edge for the half inch. I can definitely tell I'm sewing squishy things. My fabric's wanting to move a little bit. All right, here's this curve. Let's see how well we do here. So for curves, I come, sometimes have to sew one stitch at a time and, and rotate. I'm just trying to keep that part that I drew on here at that, uh, at that half inch mark. Let's move, move the wonder clip. So with the needle down, so I'm getting the needle down and then I'm picking it up and rotating it a little. And I think we are almost back to that half inch. And there we go. Now I'm right at that half inch again and we got our little curve in. So awesome, let's sew to the end. Not sewing to the end, but sew to the other side so we get that other curve. Ooh, it's funny this half inch, I'm not used to it. It's kind of fun. All right, we are approaching it again with the curve. So let's start working the curve again. 
one stitch at a time. I mean, some of you guys might have um, a little bit better machines that can do these quick curves and stuff, but um, I don't know. I feel more comfortable doing the curves a stitch at a time. There we go. All right. Uh, let's sew to the end. That's a good looking curve though. I think we did a good job there. All right. And I, again, I'm going to back tack here, which just means you go, once you get to the end, you go backwards in reverse a couple stitches and then forward again. It's, it's like tying a knot for the thread. That way, when we aggressively turn this right side out, then, um, then we'll be okay. So yeah, so I was doing the curve. So if you, you can see here, as my curve was coming to my half inch line, that's when I started to rotate it. So yeah, so between this curve here, that's about a half inch still, or close enough. So okay, there we go. Next up, I believe we trim, but let me see if we press this first. Uh, using small rounded object, round the corners, closest to the Velcro, did that. Stitch, stitch the five inch sides, leaving the top edge open, we did that. This is the top edge. Clip along the curves and turn right side out, and then we press. So, all right, we wanna clip these curves because if we would just turn this right side out, you know, turning it inside out so that the the um, colored, uh, the right side is outward. This would leave such a huge bumpy bulk here. So what we want to do is trim into it. Uh, and we're basically cutting notches out of it. And this just gives it some breathing room. And this is extra funny because we are using these. It's a half inch seam allowance. So we need more bulk out. So this, like when these squish together, when you turn it right side out, then there'll be more spacing for it. So you do want to trim that uh, or clip those cor these uh, curves. I'm gonna actually, my favorite way to clip curves is using a pinking shears. So this is what I like doing on curves. I just get in there. I mean, this is, I, I usually do this with half, with um, quarter inch seam allowances, but I just kind of go around the edge like that with the pinking shears and that kind of makes all my little markings. I'm just gonna trim these down a little bit more. But there we go, two different ways. Let's see what it looks like. All right. We flip this right side out now. Get all the fuzzles out of the way. Yeah, I'm excited. Cute little flap. All right, and you can get like, you know, here's my, my pencil or my marking pen. Get that in there and you really wanna flip these curves out the best you can. It'll be nice and thick now because we have all the, we have the, the, like a double layer of the um, fusible fleece in there now. That's looking pretty cute though. All right, so now we wanna give this a super good press because look, the, the fleece wants to pop it out that way. We want it super flat and then we're gonna top stitch around the edge just to really, really hold that down so it's not puffing up at all. So I think before I press it, because I, I'm gonna want to, I'm gonna want to top stitch it right away. Uh, before I press it, I'm going to switch my thread again. So uh, when I sewed these two pieces together, I was using my my 50 weight Orofil and which is thin. So this is a thinner thinner thread. I'm gonna switch it back to what we used for top stitching. This is what we used for you know, for the top stitching on the handles here, it's thicker. So you can see the difference in thickness. Oh, let's see, hold on. There we go. See, one's quite a bit thicker. Uh, this is a 12 weight or a fill. So I'm gonna throw that back in the machine here. 
And I will also have to switch my tension back to what I had it. I made a note of what it was and also my stitch length. And it will get a stay with this top stitching thread a little while again now, so that's good. Because I won't want to, I don't want to switch back and forth all the time. I don't think we, uh, most of the seams are actually pretty visible in this project so far, so, um, oh good, got it in there right away. So that's been, been nice. I don't have to flip around very often. All right, we are set. Let's just get this started. Oh, good morning from the UK. Nice. All right, let's give this a real good press. Turn that off for now. Okay, so my objective when pressing this is to get like the seam all kind of lined up like that. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it there. We'll have to wait for the iron to wake up a little bit. Is it better to use thicker thread for top stitching? Um, it's not necessarily better from a sense of structure. It's more just a visual thing, I, I think. Um, you know, if, if um, I don't know, as far as, as I know, I mean, I'm, I don't do a lot of top stitching, but as far as I know, it's, it's to hold the items together, the edges together really well, but it's seen. So there's an opportunity for it to be a visual part of it. So that's why I just, uh, just use the thicker, pretty colored piece. But no, you could do it with your normal thread too. I just thought it'd be fun, fun to try. All right, I might try popping out these corners or these curves a little bit, a little bit more here. So if I wanted these curves a little bit more curvy and less, um, you know, if I wanted a more gradual turn, I could have used a bigger, a bigger base than just this, but drawn on my sewing line instead of, um, instead of the seam allowance line. All right, I'm gonna just grab a little pin here and see if I can work on popping that out. Actually, that's not a very good pin. What I like using to, to pop out, here's my little go-to craft kit. I like using a T-pin. They're really thick, or the ones that I have, and um, they don't bend when I when I get in there. So I just wanna shape this curve a little bit before I press it. I think that's actually probably fine. This one, this one you can tell that there's a little bit of fabric in there. There we go, just poking it out. That's better, that's all I needed to do. All right, now let's, let's press that side. We'll put it with the Velcro down. Again, I just wanna line up those edges. Thanks, Marion. It's kind of fun working with this fleece, I gotta tell you. I know I've been, been talking about this, this fleece every, every day, but I haven't never used it and it, it's just fun. Makes it feel like a nice, substantial, finished piece. All right, we, this is working great. We're getting it nice and flat. Let's get this one side over here a little bit more. And now we can top stitch it. And again, top stitching it is just squishing those seams together so it will always lay flat like this. And uh, you know, it gives it a pretty decorative edge. So this is, you know, when it's closed, when the, when the flap is closed, we won't be seeing the Velcro. So I want the closed side to have the pretty top stitching color and the bottom side can have the, uh, my normal bobbin, my normal bobbin, gray bobbin thread. All right, let's go. So again, I think I will maybe back tack this on top. Actually, I don't need to. This time I, it's already flipped out. I'm not gonna be pulling on this at all. So I'm just going to, going to sew. So this is where I'm gonna do the, uh, about the eighth of an inch. I might need to help it. It's pretty thick right here. I might need to help it in a little bit. There we go. Now just sewing right around the edge like how we did the, uh, uh, the handles. 
and I'm just taking my time watching the edge. All right, on this curve, I'm gonna have to go little by little again. So with the needle down, lift up and turn, lift up and turn. Oh, it's looking good though. One more, I think. There we go. Oh, I can feel the Velcro underneath my fingers here. All right, start curving again. up the side. And we'll get another leader in here. Ooh, get over there. Okay, we have an outer flap. Snip this side. So there we go. So there you can really see how the um, the top stitching just flattened this whole thing out. So now this, it won't pop up. It's, it's laying really flat. It's not bubbly at all. And it's just cute. It looks like a, you know, like a finished purse always has that nice, nice top stitching. So there we go. Outer flap done. All right, next up guys, we'll get a little further on this tonight. So next up, we get to play with the outer, um, the main outer panel. So the main outer panel is the one with the fusible fleece. So I'm going to just separate these. Remember, we have two pieces here. We have the one with the the um, interfacing, the medium weight. Oops, sorry, medium, medium weight interfacing. We don't need that now. Just going to put that to the side. Uh, and then here is our one with the fusible fleece. And actually, just to start out, remember I. I left that little bit of an edge here. I'm gonna trim that. Oops, just lost my thread. I'm gonna trim that right now. Because if you remember, uh, I cut that a hair bigger during the cutting phase. So I'm just gonna line it with the fleece here. There we go. Now we're ready. So this should be at the, that 28 inches now. So let's take a look at this picture. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch these lines on first. So we're gonna draw the half inch on the top, half inch on the bottom, and then divide it up in bits of nine. So it should be nine inches in every single spot. So, and at this middle area is the front. So you can see here's where our Velcro is gonna go. Here's the embellishing area. So uh, for embellishing area, here's an example. So um, Patty machine stitched, uh, machine embroidered uh, a name here. So this whole panel area is an area that you could embellish, you could embroider, you could do whatever, but now is the time that you have to do it before you sew the, the pieces together. So that represents this area right here. So you can see that the front is actually the middle kind of panel. So all right, one thing I wanted to remember is I wanted my grasshoppers so they were they're sitting this way so that when I'm lifting it up and putting it on a shelf, then they're they're right side up. So I do want to remember that I want this side the their feet that way. All right, so I'm in position. Now I need to measure that that top area, that bottom seam allowance. Remember it's the half inch seam allowance, and then we will check on these nine inch positions and we'll, we'll measure that as well. So I'm just gonna put this on, you know, a straight edge on my, on my uh, cutting mat here. I'm gonna just take my ruler, put it on the half inch mark. There we go. And then again with my, oh, you guys can't see. I'm up a little there. There we go. So a half inch mark. 
lining it with the top edge. And I'm gonna just take my, my water erasable fabric marking pen and draw the half inch mark line. And even though this is a blue marker, I should be able to see it on this green, I think. Yep, we can see it just enough. Like right there, you can see it. All right, same thing with the bottom edge. I'm gonna just scooch it up this way instead of flipping it around just because I'm nervous I'm gonna uh, get the my positioning of this wrong. So let's do the half inch down here. All right. And then we should be left with 27 inches because a half inch on the top and half inch on the bottom, we got rid of, two, of one inch there. So we should have nine, uh, we're gonna mark nine down. You know what, I might actually just, I think I'm gonna line that half inch on my, on my cutting mat here. I can't see it very well over here. There, and, and align the edge here and I'm gonna just mark nine inches down. And you know what? I think we're gonna get the, the big old ruler out to do that. So nine inches. I could just count, count the board too, I suppose. Use my, my um, mat. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so I'm gonna line that with my half inch mark. And there we go. This is our first nine inches. So this is water soluble, so I'll be able to just dab this out with some water uh, once we're done here. All right, scooch it up. We'll mark our second nine inch panel. And this is, again, the, the second area is the area that will be the visual front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Yep, that was in the right spot. Well, I have to count, it freaks me out that I'll be in the wrong, wrong area. Where did that line go again? Oh, it's way up there, okay. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's late, rulers and everything get weird for me in the evening. So, all right, this would be our last marking here. Oh, you always triple count too, oh, that's funny. Uh, this is a pen, so you can use chalk, that would actually work really well as, as well, dressmakers, chalk. I'm just using the water soluble marker since it's what I had around. All right, let's double check that this last little bit is nine inches as well. All right, nine inches, and then our little seam allowance here. So that's, I mean, we're kind of down to a quarter inch seam allowance, but I think we'll be okay. All right, there we are. Next up, so here I gotta just be able to see it. So okay, right right there is, is my first line. This is the panel right here that can be the decorating area. I'm not gonna do that. I, I wanna see all my crickets, so we'll, we're just gonna leave it as is. Or not, they're grasshoppers. I, I keep calling them crickets. I think that's kind of funny. All right, I think next up is the other side of the Velcro. Let's just double check. First, mark your half inch from the top and bottom. Did that, mark your nine inches across. Okay, divide our pair in three identical nine inch sections. Embellish, uh, we're not doing that. Okay, after embellishing, proceed to stitch the soft side, that's this, of the five inch long piece of Velcro to the middle panel, two inches below the top nine inch mark and centered left to right. Okay, so two and a half inches below this line. So let's get our ruler out again. I'm putting it on the two and a half inch mark. And then also let's, center two and a half 
here's the half inch mark. I'm gonna center this on here. Forget how wide this was. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it was 12. So if we do it right in the middle here, we should have about a half inch. One, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. All right. Right there is where we're putting this thing. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did last night because I think that worked super duper well. I'm gonna just get some of my um, acid-free glue stick out. Drop that in the middle here. I'm trying to get it in the center just to tack it down. I, I don't want it where I'll be stitching towards the outer edge. So um, just enough to get this tacked down. You know, before the Splendid Sampler quilt along, I'd never used glue for anything, but now <laughs> I've decided it's very handy. All right, was this right? One, two, three and a half, and one, two, three and a half. Okay, here is center, and two and a half inches down. So, all right, we got that glued. Oh, wait a sec. It looks like the baseline is supposed to be at the two and a half inches, not um, the top line. So we actually have to scooch this up. So how wide is, is this? So I need it two and a half inches minus the thickness of this. So we need it right there. Okay, so this is actually the two and a half inches. Hold on. Gotta measure that now. Here's my blue line. Yep, that's two and a half inches down. So I had I had glued it to the, um, so that the two and a half inches was in this space, but on this picture, it's looking like the baseline is, is at the two and a half inches. So the bottom edge should be at the two and a half. So, um, I got a little bit of glue on here, but I think with some water that will come out. And uh, let's just retack this again. All right. There we go. Now we should be at the right spot. Okay. One, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. Okay, now we're looking good. All right, let's sew that down. So this will be a little tricky. We're we're right in the middle of our piece here, so I'm gonna have to I'm ha gonna have to like roll up this edge a little bit to fit it in my machine. And I'm gonna take the, oop, turn it on, that'd be good. I'm gonna take, oops, take my uh, leader out of here as well. There we go. Oh, how did, how did I ever sew without, without glue? All right, you know what? I'm gonna start on the other side because I remember what I said last night, the, oh, it's coming off. The bottom right-hand corner on, on a piece is typically the least looked at corner. So I wanna start here instead of up here where all my bulky stuff would be. How far is the Velcro from the top? Um, well, it should be the nine inches plus the two and a half plus the half, so it should be about 12 inches from from the top of this. Yep, and we're we're pretty good. We're right we're right there. All right, now we're good. Get this in here. The nice thing is I oh I, this fabric also has these lines on, so I'm kind of following those lines just to make it pretty. All right, here we go. I am top stitching this down. 
Again, I'm using my top stitch thread because it is going to be visible and it's just pretty. All right, sewing to the point. One more stitch. All right, then rotating. Yep, lots of bulk here now. One more. There we go. Oh, this orange is so pretty. This orange and pink. Orange and pink is just so neat. And that's kind of what we're doing here, the orange and pink. So I, I like these two together, the orange top stitching thread and pink Velcro. Again. And one last little bit to where we started and we'll be good. Again, I'm going to back tack that as well to kind of tie that knot to hold it in place. All right, that's that. Pull it out and snip. Oh, it looks so easy when I do it. Well, let's just take it one step at a time. One little step at a time and going slow. So I'm going to snip these top two pieces and then pull the back pieces forward and just snip those as well. And there we go. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, we got tons of time yet too. So all right, just making sure I have this in the right spot again. Here's my, my line for the center panel. Oh, so cute. So ultimately, this guy will get Velcroed to there. Oh wait. Yeah, he'll get Velcroed to there, but he'll he'll get there in a long way. So this will this will wrap all the way around like this. So this is where he'll be attached. And then when you open the Velcro, then you got your whole thing unwrapping. Fun. I always kind of like to visualize what I'm doing. Like oh, what's actually going where as I do a project. So, so every once in a while I'll check, check again like that. Okay, next up are the handles. All right, let's grab those again. Handle number one. Uh, I'll keep handle number two over here. Okay, Velcro next position, your first handle. This is gonna be first handle two inches below your nine inch mark. So again, the two inches is the bottom, bottom most point um, below your nine inch mark and then, and one inch from the left and right edges. Fold each raw edge of your handle. So we do have a raw edge here still. Fold each raw edge half inch under and then stitch a square with an X. Okay, the square with an X is a big thing to really hold everything in place. So let's get these measurements right. So here's my nine inch line again. I want it an inch, an inch from the sides and two inches down. And we are also folding it. And I have to remember that I want my top stitching visible. So I don't want to go this way where I have my bobbin thread. I want to go this way where my top stitching thread is. So what I'm going to do first, I think I'm going to just fold this half inch over and I'm going to just kind of estimate. I think that looks pretty good. We are, I am going to use pins for this though. Um, it's, it's further in, so I can't really use wonder clips. I'm going to just fold this up about that half inch and then let's get the ruler out. We'll go two inches down from my line and one inch in. So two inches right there. So right there. And I remember I folded two inches and one inch. I folded my half inch over here. So let's just pin that. I'm gonna pin, pin up. I'm gonna pin this so it's straight up first. 
like that, and then I'm going to pin, I think I'll pin right, right at the base here. It's pretty thick, so I'm just going to get right on the edge here, in and out. Okay, I think that looks decent. Uh, I, my uh, little, little edge is peeking out there just a hair, my raw edge, so I think I'll just kind of squish it in there. When I sew, I think I'll, I'll squish that in a hair, see if I can. So like when I, when I stitch on here, I'll just kind of, with my stiletto, I'll just push this in while I sew. So all right, this is attached. Let's do the same thing on the other side. You could sew this side first and then go on to the other side, but I'm going to try and pin them both at once. So again, you know, making sure that this is laying flat the whole way and then that my top stitching is over here. Again, let's, let's kind of fold that about a half inch in and get our ruler out again. So two inches down and one inch over. Just like that, two inches down and one inch over. Okay, and let's double check that these look relatively even. I have these little lines again on the pattern, so I can actually just follow that line. It's about in the center. Yep, that's looking pretty decent. So again, I'm going to make sure this is going straight up. Get a pin in there. Just so things are flattened out of, out of the way. There we go. And then I'm going to pin this bottom little bit. Let's tuck this in. I think my fold's not quite perfect there. This is definitely a slow and steady wins the race sort of thing. If you want these to be all nice and nice and perfect. So there we go. Those are our two bits. So next up we're gonna just, what we're gonna do is we are gonna sew a square and then put an X through it. So I'm gonna start on like, I don't know, I'll probably start here and sew around and then an X and then down at the bottom and then another X. And I'm going to just kind of mark, let's just mark a square. So this should be about an inch thick. Yeah. So I'm going to just mark the top of the inch. And actually I want to be just shy of the inch to get my square. I don't really need to mark it, I can estimate. So I'm going to be within here for my square. But I don't know. I guess that normally I probably wouldn't mark this, but just because, uh, you know, I want them to look the same on either side. That's kind of why I'm doing that. All right. And again, I'm going to be just within there to make it square. And so now I'm going to follow my top stitching line that's already there and do my do my square. And we'll do our little back tack as well. So I'm going right over the line, starting, you know, a, a little bit in from my top marking. All right, I'm going to take this bottom pin out and grab my stiletto. This is where I want to kind of push that little edge in. So I can't see it, hopefully, once it's sewn. All right, let's rotate. Ooh, I could have probably gone one more stitch, but we'll be okay here. All right, back to the top stitching on the other side. Oh, how did I come up with the name Penguin and Fish? Uh, it's actually an animation that I did in college uh, called The Penguin and the Fish. It's, it's on my YouTube channel. If you scroll down uh, to the studio happenings section, It's about a penguin who falls in love with a fish or they fall in love with each other, but then the fish has to migrate away 
Uh, and uh, they keep in touch through email after that. <laughs> so that's, that's the gist. Oh yeah, you guys can't see the sewing. Sorry, there we go. <laughs> uh, I went, I started here on the top stitching and went around here. Thanks for showing that out. Uh, I'll definitely, we have the other side so you can see it there. So now I'm, I'm doing my X. Did I do this side already? Yeah. So I'm gonna get just aim for this other side. All right, and then I'm gonna go again up one of these edges so I can do the other half of the X. Actually, you know what, I think we'll go, we'll go on the bottom. Give the bottom some extra reinforcing. All right, and then the other side of the X. Oh, you ordered a kit today, awesome. Yeah, there was one more kit available, so glad you got it. All right, and now up this side, and I am gonna back tack it again at that corner. Well, that's it, we got our first edge done. Uh, I will, uh, since I didn't have the camera on it, you know, we'll do this other edge here too, but I'll, I'll show you this. First, let me, all right, snip that there, and now we'll just kind of pull up these ends a little bit. All right, there we be. Next side, so now that you can see the sewing machine, but here we go. That's our little, um, oh gosh, it really blends in, doesn't it? So you can see, I went around and then did that X through it. So let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna start on the same edge to the, the, um, the right edge of this. So let's get these under. And again, I'm gonna start, I drew my, my one inch mark on there. I'm actually gonna start just lower of that, like an eighth inch, 16th to an eighth inch lower, so it matches um, my seams that I already have there. So right about there, I'm going over the seam that I already have on the right. Oh, let's, let's leave that pin in for a moment. So again, a square with a, uh, an X through it. So again, back tacking that. All right, I'm gonna remove that pin. And again, I'm gonna try and push in that little bit of an edge that's popping out. And again, slow and steady is good. All right, let's rotate. I got all this bulk here now, so I can fold it up and throw it through my machine. All right. Oh, I didn't quite get that tucked under, but that's okay. Up to um, just an eighth inch or so from that marking again that I made. I think that's good. I'll remove that pin. Going across this way. I'm gonna actually snip this, um, snip this edge while I have it visible to me here. So I don't get it all tangled. All right, press the foot's down. Oh yeah, I got crooked here, but oh well. All right, now the X. So we've added a diagonal, just aiming for that other corner. All right, and then going across the bottom again. I know, it's totally coming together, isn't it, Wanda? And it, it, it's so quickly too, I think. All right, and then up the other half of the X. 
and I'll back tack that as well. Alrighty, we got one handle on. Let's snip that thread again and flip it and snip the back threads. Pull them up a little bit and snip. I got fuzzles everywhere on this guy already. So, okay, we should now have a very cute handle. And we did the top stitching in the correct direction. And here we are. Here's our two little X's. I got a little crooked on, on the second one here, but oh well. Awesome. All right, guys, let's see if we can do the other ones quick here. Uh, so next up, um, next position your first handle, we did that, fold the raw edges, making it. Second handle will go on the bottom panel, so down here. So this was still on the middle panel. Now we're on the, the lowermost panel. Um, up, oh, two and a half inches. So that's, that's a different, that's different. So, um, up two and a half inches from the raw edge. Oh, it would be two, it would be two inches from our, from our bottom mark. But you know, if we just add the half inch for the seam allowance, then, then we'll go right there. So two and a half inches from the bottom and then the, the one inch in and we'll fold, fold the edges again. So, all right. Again, let's make sure that my orange top stitching is at the top. So two and a half inches from the bottom and one inch from the center. And these ones are going down this way, not, not up this way. So it's the opposite direction of the other one. So I'm gonna fold this half an inch, just get my, my pins near me again. So again, I'm just kind of guessing on this, this half inch. Oops, and uh, throwing it right up here. Oh, half inches down here. Never mind, right there. All right, again, I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and parallel and throw a pin there first. Come on. There we go. All right, and then I'm gonna pin right on the edge here. All right, first side pin, let's do the same thing on the opposite side. So let's measure our two and a half inches. Oh, I like, to, I like doing it this way better. Two and a half inches and one inch in, one, two and a half and one inch. All right, let's fold this over our half inch or so. All right, and flip it, Oop, moved a little bit there. Two and a half and one, so right there. So I'm gonna just flatten this out again. In that and get that guy on. So let's draw our square, but again, I want to, I'm going to draw my one inch up here too, just to have that little visual reminder of where to make my square. So again, I'm, I'm actually making the square a little shy of this but it's easier just to measure the inch. All right, and then same thing over here. Awesome, we'll get these guys completely sewn on tonight. I'm stoked. We'll have this whole outer, outer bit done. All right, zoop, back to the machine. Let's draw our X. I'm gonna start Ooh, there we go. I'm going to start on this uh, right side again. That seemed to work okay last time. 
get underneath there, stitching right on the seam allowance or the seam, the top stitching I already have there. Out here, pin. I'm just gonna grab my stiletto. Just kind of helps guide my fabric a little bit. All right, rotate. I know after the splendid sampler project, this does seem really quick, doesn't it? Even after the hourglass quilt that we made um, before this, this seems so fast. That's what I was excited about with the designer series. I really wanted to do some fun, quick sewing projects that we could still uh, learn a bunch on and try new methods and new materials and, and all that. So I'm, I'm stoked. This is working out really fun, I think. I'm having a really fun time actually uh, sewing this guy together. Just refreshing. I'm really liking it. All right, I'm gonna snip that thread. Going across now. And I don't really need this pin here. I'll get rid of it so I don't jab myself. Oops, dropped my stiletto. Okay, let's get that X and then we'll just have the one other side. And uh, I will still, there's one last step that I'll do tonight yet. It is basting the, I'm gonna go one more stitch. It's basting the flap, the outer flap, or the outer, uh, this guy that we did, that we did earlier. It's basting that to this piece as well. And what that means is we're gonna sew it on, but we're, um, we're gonna sew it a little closer to the edges, not, not our half inch seam allowance. And the reason for that is, ooh, I'm in bulk world now. Uh, the reason for that is, is that it's, it's temporary. We just wanna hold it in place for the time being, and then we'll be going over it with our, our half inch seam allowance later. So for the time being, we just need to kind of tack it down with a few stitches. All right, first side. Snip this top. Oop, I sewed in a scrap piece. <laughs> All right, other side quick, and we'll be done with the handles. Crazy. All right. Getting this back in the machine. Start right about there. Get rid of that pin. All right, now I gotta roll up this whole guy and get it in here. Rotate again. About right there. Cruising along a little bit more now. I'm gonna snip my little thread here. I think it was a wonder clip onto the floor. <laughs> the bag is pushing everything everywhere. All right, and now the X. So I'm gonna roll this up again. Get rid of that pin. I'm gonna sew the bottom edge again, since that's like the least sewn side right now. This will balance it out. All right, and one last bit. All right. That is that. Again, let's trim. Let's post the front first. You can pull thread to the back. Okay, here are the handles. So we got this bottom one here, and then we got this one here. So again, let's try and fold this up. 
This guy will go here. This guy will come up like this. Cute. Now we need to sew this flap on quick now. We'll do that right now tonight yet. And then that will pop over like that. Oh my God, it's so cute. All right, let's do that last step. So we are basting this, flip that back around, onto the bottom edge. So we're on the bottom edge here. Uh, and we're going to, with the Velcro side up and the raw edges together, we are going to, um, let's see, lastly, baste the outer flap to the bottom raw edge with the Velcro facing up and centered. So let's just double check that we're centered here. I'm just gonna kind of visualize it. So it's like one, two and a half inches and one, two and a half inches. So let's, let's make sure we got that. Raw edges are aligned. Let's get this flap out of the way so we don't accidentally sew that. I'm gonna throw a wonder clip. Oh, Patty, I, I'm i just, I love my fabric selections. <laughs> I love it with your fabric and I love these, uh, this green with this orange and pink. I'm, I'm totally really digging it. So now here's where I am not, I'm not going the half inch. I'm not doing our normal seam allowance. I'm just gonna do, we'll just go like our quarter inch across here. Uh, again, this is just to tack it down for the time being uh, so it's so we don't have to like Try and line it up and do everything else at the same time later. It'll already be attached So all right, let's just I'm gonna just leave my top stitching thread in there too. I think that's not gonna be an issue All right, this will be Our just you know quarter inch or so not our half inch And I don't think I, I don't need a back tack really either because this is, again, just to hold it down for now. We're not going to be really aggressive with it, I don't think. Ooh, I could almost use a walking foot for this. We got a lot of bulk in here now. I'm guessing that's part of the reason for tacking it down now, just because it's pretty thick and dealing with a lot of fabric at this point. All right. I think that's where we're calling it. Oops, let's get the needle up. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna snip these at the raw edge there. Got a little bit bubbly at the end here, but that should be fine. All right, now we can really see this. Yeah, I am, I'm loving this. And I hope you guys are having fun uh, making this too. And be sure to share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters crafters group. Ooh, let's get this in here right away. So um, this is the next step is is the inside, but let's pretend it's here already because they'll kind of hold on to each other. Then we can kind of get a final glimpse of this for the for the evening. All right. Here's my lovely art tote and I'm gonna fold it up now. So uh, this, this front flap folds up to the handle and then it goes up like that. And then let's close it. So let's get the back flap, which is now attached. <laughs> Look, it's cute. Cute. Look, it looks like a Looks like a bag. <laughs> so we're gonna shrink the sides quite a bit because we'll be losing the uh, half inch on either side. But this is probably close to the fi the finished size right here. Oh, I love it. Okay. Oh, and I can see all my little grasshoppers here too, peeking one, peeking out from underneath there. Love it. All right, guys. I'm gonna flip you around so we can uh, take a look at it here, and uh, we'll call it an evening. Hello. So here we are, two little handles. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> All right, I'm having a really fun time sewing this. Again, it is way easier than I thought it was, especially looking at the picture. So again, here's here's the uh, the pattern right here. You know, it folds up all cute. We have all our pens and pencils and paper in there. So that's what we'll be starting on tomorrow is the inside with all the little pockets. But the outside, that is, that's like it. 
Oh, look at the back side where you can see all the guys without the flap. That's awfully cute too. So there we are, handles and flap done. So, all right guys, be sure to share yours in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I am loving seeing the different fabric combinations. It's so fun, they all look so different even though it's the same same pattern and everything. It, the, the color choice is just really, change things up, it's fun. And uh, if you wanna stitch it as well, the PDF pattern is available. It's at the link here on the Mod Kid Etsy site. And uh, the supplies are listed there as well if you wanna find out what all the other supplies are, like the fusible fleece and that uh, staple, that uh, interfacing and all that as well. And those should be pretty easy to find. But awesome, I am stoked. This is cruising right along here. We're gonna get a good part of all the little inside flaps together tomorrow. So awesome, thanks again guys for joining. This will stay up at uh, Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube as well. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a great night guys, good night.